Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we're taking a look at the Frost DK on the Shadowlands Alpha. So Frost DK has had a few changes, um, nothing that will overall change the way you play the Frost DK, rather they changed some of the synergies, they made a bunch of abilities baseline uh, that weren't before, and overall the Frost DK, they, the approach they seem to have taken is that it works on live, so let's not make too many changes. Instead, just make a few changes that are not very impactful, but they're just nice quality of life changes. So first of all, let's take a look at the baseline stuff and everything that's changed with the spec. Um, the big thing that you will probably notice and most people will bring up is that you're able to have a two-handed weapon. Uh, so you're able to have a uh, dual wield or a two-handed weapon, which Overall, shouldn't change your play style. Um, I know that most people think that if you have a two-handed weapon, then you're going to do huge obliterates, uh, at least that's the class fantasy. And then if you do a wield, you will do a bunch of smaller hits. It doesn't really change how you play the class itself. Mostly what it changes is just aesthetic. And the big thing that it will also change is your rune forges. So... I guess let's talk about rune forges because it does affect affect this whole weapon situation. If you have a two-handed weapon, you're only going to be able to have one rune forge on it. If you dual wield, you'll have two rune forges. And especially with the addition of these new rune forges, I just don't see a way to balance uh, the one-handed versus two-handed spec just because of how strong these rune forges are. Two-handed frost DK would need to do a lot more baseline damage. Uh, to make up for losing a rune forge. So the first big rune forge that they added is rune of hysteria. And this will affix your weapon with a rune that increases your maximum runic power by 20, so you'll be able to have 120 runic power instead of 100. And also your attacks have a chance to increase your RP generation by 20% for 8 seconds. Um, so everything that generates RP, obliterate, remorseless winter, frost sight, Everything that generates RP will get 20% bonus. And this does have a nice synergy with one of the talents that I'll talk about with later. But inst instantly, you should be thinking Breath of Syndragosa. This Rune of Hysteria was made specifically for Breath of Syndragosa. I don't see it being used too much with Ice Cap, because in that situation, Razor Ice and Fun Crusader just seem better overall. But for Breath of Syndragosa, this could potentially mean a lot of extra damage. Uh, Razor Ice is unchanged, Sanguination and Spell Warding are for Blood DK. Apocalypse is for Unholy DK mostly, uh, even though Frost DKs are able to have a pet now or a ghoul available, so technically your ghoul's attacks could apply these debuffs, which is Healing Reduction, Increase Damage Taken from the Death Knight, and Reduce Damage Dealt to Death Knight, and they slow. So depending on how often your ghoul attacks and what the uptime is, this could be useful, but so far looking at it, first glance, I don't see this being used on Frost DK at all. Uh, Fallen Crusader unchanged. And then Unending Thirst is a new one as well. That gives you 10% haste and movement speed. And each time you kill an enemy, you get healed for 5% for of your maximum health. And also you move faster while you're dead. So this one should instantly be for leveling. Um, getting extra haste, extra movement speed, and healing every time you kill something instantly yells leveling to me. So this rune will probably not see much use once you hit cap, but for leveling it might be quite nice. So what are rune forges going to be? What are most people going to use? We don't know yet. Um, depends on what the proc rate of this rune is, but for Breath of Syndragos I'm instantly thinking Hysteria, plus a Fallen Crusader, or Hysteria plus Razor Ice, or if Hysteria ends up being bad, then we'll just stick with Razor Ice and Fallen Crusader like we do in BFA. So with those out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the abilities that were made baseline in the Frost Kit. Uh, the big one that most people wanted was Frostworm's Fury, so as you can see it is no longer a talent, and it's been moved to a baseline spell. Still does the same thing, still a 3 minute cooldown, big dragon, big damage. So I'm very happy that they made this baseline. It was an iconic Frost DK ability. 
and it's very sad that for the entirety of BFA, it was outclassed by Gathering Storm, so you never ended up using probably the most iconic Frost Decay ability. Um, next, we have AMZ. So AMZ is being made baseline. It's a 2-minute cooldown, 20% spell damage reduction or magic damage reduction for anyone who stands in it. This is going to be extremely good for any bosses where you can stack up. Um, since on every single boss encounter, the damage that your rate takes is magic damage. It's very rare that a boss does physical damage to the entire raid. So this is going to be huge for raiding. Um, then we also have Lichborn. So Lichborn in BFA is a PvP talent that is a damage reduction on a 1 minute cooldown, but you also get slowed. They changed this. It is now a 2 minute cooldown baseline and it's 10% leech for 10 seconds. And you're also immune to charm, fear, and sleep effects. And you can also use it to break yourself out of those effects. Um, so if you use it, it's just 10% leech. And if you think about 10% leech during your Breath of Sindragosa window or whenever you're DPSing a large number of adds, that is quite a lot of healing. And to tie Death Coil into it, uh, Frost DK also gets Death Coil now which can either be used as kind of a ranged filler if you're not able to be in melee range of the boss, just to dump some runic power from range, or while you're Lichborn, you can death coil yourself to heal yourself. So that is quite a nice change. Um, the only situation where I see players death coiling themselves instead of death striking is if you're out of range. Uh, if there's no targets to hit, or whatever you're trying to hit to Death Strike is out of range. In those cases, you can just Lichborn and Death Coil yourself. So that is a nice interaction that's, um, that DK's had in the past, but now it's being brought back. Then we also have Death and DK making a return. Currently, there's no benefit, um, and I assume they need to add some sort of benefit for standing in your death and decay like making your obliterate obliterate cleave like an additional target or something along those lines uh, because currently dnd you just drop it it does some damage and that's the end of it in the tooltip it still says that your skirt strikes will hit nearby enemies even though i am spec frost so i really assume and hope that they add an interaction uh, to your obliterate or to your frost strike make a cleave uh the similar way obliter or skirt strikes do for unholy even if it doesn't cleave all nearby targets make it cleave an additional target two additional targets something along those lines same way hard strike uh, works for blood dk then we also have raise dead so raise dead is a two minute cooldown and the pet that you actually raise lasts one minute it's the same pet as the Unholy DK, except you can't control it, so it's a uh, Guardian instead of an actual pet, um, and it lasts one minute. So this is just an extra button that you press to do damage. We'll see how they actually tune this and how much damage it will actually do. Um, and tied in with summoning a pet, you also, you also get Sacrificial Pact. Uh, this makes your pet explode, and heal you for 25% of your health. We'll see if this is worth it. Like I said in my Unholy DK video, um, as Frost DK, it might be worth just summoning your pet and blowing it up for the extra damage. Um, or on single target, it might not even end up being worth sacrificing your pet for the extra damage. Or you might need a weak aura where, like, when there's one second left on your pet, that's when you sacrifice it. Um, so yeah, those are the major baseline changes. So as you can see, Frost DK got a lot of abilities back baseline. So next, looking at the talents. So right now I'm specced in a Breath of Sinjagosa build. In the first tier, there's no changes. All of these work the same way they have in the past. Second tier, uh, no changes as far as I know. Third tier, they changed blind Blinding Sleet. So now whenever the disorient effect ends on your target, they are slowed by 50% for 6 seconds. So that is quite a nice change. Um, so Chains is a 70% slow and Remorseless Winter is a 20% slow. So 
So Blinding Sleet is just going to be one of those in between, but at least you can hit everything with it instead of having to like chains individual targets. Then in the tier 4 row, they changed Avalanche slightly. Uh, they just upped its damage from 16% to 20%. So it's a 4% buff. And they changed Frost Sight to only hit up to 5 enemies instead of all enemies in front of you. I don't agree with this change. Uh, most abilities like this have been capped at 8 targets. So I don't see why Frost Sight is capped at 5 instead of 8. Um, because Frost Sight was not doing all that much damage. Um, if you cap it at 5 targets, Frost Sight is most likely not going to be worth using. Just because at 5 targets, Frost Sight is better than Obliterates, obviously. Um, but you need to get pretty high up in crit for it to be actually worth using. Early on in the expansion, Frost Sight is usually pretty bad because you have low crit. And Frost Sight benefits so much from crits since it does four times its normal damage whenever it crits. Um, then in this row, they haven't changed anything. And the second to last row, where they removed Frostworm's Fury, they added back Hypothermic Presence. So this is a new talent. 45 second cooldown. Um, and it reduces your ability's runic power cost by 35% for 8 seconds. And does not trigger the global cooldown. So this instantly screams Breath of Syndragosa to me, just because whenever you hit that point in your Breath of Syndragosa where it's starting to get hard to keep up, you just hit this button and you're able to kind of regenerate some runic power because each tick of Breath of Syndragosa is going to essentially be discounted. Um, then in the last row, they buffed Ice Cap from 3 seconds CDR to 4 seconds CDR. No changes to Obliteration and no changes to Breath of Syndragosa other than just general tuning changes and also the addition of being able to use it with a two-handed weapon instead of one-handed weapons. So what do I want to see changed for Frost DK? First of all, I want to see Inexorable Assault and Icy Talon slightly buffed or Cold Heart slightly nerfed. Uh, Cold Heart had a lot of interactions, especially with Pillar of Frost, and oh also i forgot to change or to mention this um initially in my notes i saw that they changed pillar of frost from a 15 sec 15 percent strength to a 10 percent but i see that it's now 20 percent i don't know if they reverted and buffed it um but yeah and the other thing is that they changed the empower rune weapon cd from two minutes to 1.8 minutes I don't know why they did this. It's already desynced. Like, Frost DK abilities already desync pretty bad. So I'm not sure why they made this change. Um, but they did. So there's that. Uh, for talent builds, there's still going to be two predominant builds. There's going to be the Breath of Syndragosa build and an Ice Cap or Obliteration build. Also, although I don't see Obliteration being used unless they actually buff this a little bit. Um, this talent hasn't seen you since, like, early Legion, if I remember correctly. Um, so for Breath of Syndragosa build, the first few tiers are very similar. Uh, this tier for resource generation, it just ends up being a simple math problem of what gains you the most resources. And unless they bu slightly buff Horn of Winter to give you more runic power, 25 is a little bit low. If this was like 50, then it would be a lot better for Breath of Syndragosa. Um, but yeah, in the first row, I believe they should buff Inexorable Assault and Icy Talents because these two should be the go-to talent builds for like, um, like Icy Talents, I imagine should work well with Ice Cap, whereas Inexorable Assault should work well with Obliteration and then Cold Heart with Breath of Syndragosa. So that's how it makes sense in my head. Uh, and then in this row, I think this row is Kind of fine, other than Horn of Winter needing a slight buff. In the level 35 row, this row is kind of boring. So Frozen Pulse and Avalanche are both super basic. Uh, they don't really interact with your toolkit at all. Like, I feel like Avalanche should be the go-to talent for any cleave scenarios or large amount of AoE since Frost Sight is now capped. Any big pulls Avalanche should be the go-to. 
any mid-size to cleave pulls, frost sight should be the go-to, and in a single target build, frozen pulse should be the go-to. But they haven't been able to tune these correctly to actually make this row viable. Um, in BFA, it was either frost sight on AoE or frozen pulse on single target, and that was the end of your decision making. In the level 45 row, Glacial Advance should be just removed from the game, give us a new spell. Uh, this button has been pretty much broken ever since it was added, so I really hope that they do something with Glacial Advance, either replace it with a different ability, um, or just try to fix it and either make it use more runic power, um, or make it not be not broken and actually deal a decent amount of damage on aoe because in bfa for example glacial advance is so bad that you're better off just spamming frost sites and letting your runic power be capped uh, just because of how good gathering storm is so this talent has never seen use the last time this talent was used in was an emerald nightmare in legion other than that no one's ever used this talent Hypothermic Presence sounds pretty cool, and Gathering Storm is still like it was before, so these talents are cool, but something needs to be done about Glacial Advance. And then in the last row, like I said, they need to do something with Obliteration, um, either change it, replace it with a new talent, or buff it a little bit so that Obliteration build where you're weaving um, Obliterates with another ability makes its way back to the game. Uh, but other than that, the Frost DK hasn't seen too many changes as far as gameplay changes. Um, it's mostly been just the great unpruning, return all the abilities to Frost DK, um, add all of the utility back that it used to have. Like I said, Death and Decay still needs work. Uh, but other than that, the Frost DK changes so far are good. I really hope they just address some of the death talents that currently exist as well as buffing slash nerfing slash changing some of the talents that either don't see use um, or end up being super boring and have no interaction with your actual kit. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any comments um, about the Frost DK make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll take a look and answer all your questions. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to join my Discord, you can find the link to it in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.